Hello, today we're going to talk about how to create graphs using your TI-83 or TI-84, specifically a type of graph called a parametric graph. The graphs we're going to make are going to look something like the graph that's down below, which is the graph of the height of a ball that's been thrown into the air. The steps for creating a graph are going to be this. The first thing we'll do is determine what sort of formulas we'll use. For creating a position versus time graph, we'll probably use the SOVOLT for AT&T formula. For creating a velocity versus time graph, we'll use the VF equals V0 plus AT formula. Once we've determined what sort of numbers we need in our formulas, we'll turn the calculator on and enter parametric mode. We'll type some formulas in the Y equals screen, which will look a little different. And then we'll adjust the window settings if need be. Let's look a little closer at this position versus time graph and try to get an idea for what are the starting values. One of the first things I look at when I look at a position versus time graph is the y-intercept, which is right here. That's the initial position. And so in this graph, it looks like this ball started at a height of 6 meters. The next thing I'd like to be able to see is what's the initial speed. The initial speed on a position versus time graph is the slope of the line here at zero, which is a little hard to tell. Let's look at the velocity versus time graph of this particular ball and see if we can read it from there. On the velocity versus time graph, the y-intercept is the initial speed. In this case, that's 12 meters per second. The third thing I'd like to notice is what is the acceleration of this object? I'm guessing that it's been thrown on Earth, and its acceleration, therefore, would be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. To test that, I should look and see what is the slope of the velocity versus time graph, because that's acceleration. Slope would be the change in y over the change in x. And uh, if I just draw this triangle, it looks like it went from 12 down to 2. That's about 10 meters per second down in one second, which would indicate an acceleration of negative 10 meters per second squared. And so that sounds pretty close to the 9.8 that I'm assuming uh, we used. So that's what we'll go with. Let's go back to the position versus time graph and see if we can put this onto our calculators. The formula for position is the initial position plus the initial speed times time plus one-half the acceleration times time squared. When we're creating a graph on our calculator, we need three numbers. That's the initial position, the initial velocity, and the acceleration. The initial position, we said, was six. The initial velocity, we looked at the other graph and said that that was 12. Time is going to be our dependent variable. We're going to leave it in there. And we said the acceleration was the typical negative 9.8 that we've seen before. And again, time is the variable. We're going to leave it in there. And so this equation would tell us where, specifically, at what height the ball is at any point in time. When we create our graph, this is going to be one of the equations that we type in. Let's move to do that now. Remember that one of the first steps to creating these new parametric types of graphs that use time as the variable is to go to the mode and switch to parametric mode. That's down here. Instead of function, we're going to put it in parametric mode instead. Now, when we press the y equals screen, we see something that looks a little different. There are two equations required for each line, indicated by the x1 equals and the y1 equals. When you use a parametric equation, you need a formula for what's drawn on the x-axis and a formula for what's drawn on the y-axis. For a position versus time graph, the x-axis is just time, and so that formula is simple. It's just a t. You could hit alpha 4 to put a t on there. But if we press the xt theta n button, notice when in parametric mode, instead of giving you an x, it gives you a t. Now, we can type in the position formula that we derived a second ago. That was 
6 plus 12t plus 1 half times negative 9.8t squared. Now, let's press graph and see what we see. If the graph looks a little silly, it's because we haven't adjusted the window settings properly. Let's take a look at the window settings we had on the previous graph and see if we can mimic them on the calculator. If we look at the x-axis, it looks like the smallest value is a 0, and the biggest value is 3 and a half, and the lines go up by half-second intervals. That would indicate an x min of 0, an x max of 3 and a half, and an x step value of 0 0.5. On the y-axis, we went from 0 up to 14, and the step was by 2. So a y min of 0, a y max of 14, and a step of 2. If we go back to our calculator now and press the window button, we can make those adjustments. We'll put 0 for x min, 3.5 for x max, and 0.5 for x step. And we'll put 0, 14, and 2 for the y variables. Now if we hit graph, you'll see that the graph looks much more like we had before. Now I can already hear some of you guys asking, what are those t variables all about? Well, for a graph using parametric equations, you can set the amount of time that you want the graph to be graphed for. Currently, my graph was set to go for the first three seconds of the flight, from 0 to 3. Let's suppose we had instead only graphed the first two seconds of the flight. Now if you hit graph, you'll see that about halfway through the graph, it stops because you only programmed it to graph the first two seconds. People also ask, what does the t-step value do? That's easier to understand if we use a dot diagram instead of the connected graph I've got shown here. I'm going to go to y equals and go over to this line here and hit enter a few times until you see that it's just a dot. Now when I hit graph, you'll see what the calculator actually did when it created the graph. I'm going to press trace and you can see where the calculator actually calculated. It graphed something at 0 seconds, at 0.25 seconds, at half a second, and so on and connected these dots with a line. If you wanted more precision or more accuracy in your graph, you might want to, instead of going to quarter second intervals, you might want to make this tenth of a second intervals. Now when I hit graph, notice there are more points. If you wanted the best graph in the world, maybe you would change it to thousandth of second intervals. Of course, that comes with a price. It's going to take a long time to calculate that. You are graphing 2,000 different data points here. Thankfully for you guys, I edited that part out. It took about 30 seconds to finish the graph. Typically, I usually use a time setting of about a tenth of a second. That's a good compromise between accuracy and speed. And you usually want to make sure that your time is long enough to see the entire graph. Three seconds was fine for this particular situation. Let me just finish now writing down what we typed on the calculator to create the graph. For the x equals equation, we had used x equals t. And for the y equals equation, we used 6 plus 12t plus half of negative 9.8t squared. And for our time values, we settled eventually on 0 to 3 by tenths of a second. Now let's quickly see if we can make a velocity versus time graph. For the velocity versus time graph, the formula was Vs, velocity at any time, is equal to the initial velocity plus at. The settings for this particular 
scenario was that it started at 12 meters per second and we were using normal gravity of negative 9.8 times time. So when we make a graph, we'll have our x value be time and our y equals e formula will be 12 plus negative 9.8t. Now looking at this particular graph, the window settings the, on the x-axis look like they go from 0 to 4 by 1s. And the y values look like they range from negative 20 to positive 20 by 4s. And our time settings should work fairly well, going from 0 to 3 by tenth, since it's the same scenario, just a different type of graph. Let's bring up the calculator and plug those values in and see what we can find. We'll go to the y equals. I'm going to turn this graph off by hitting Enter and then going down to a new graph and type t for the x equals and 12 plus negative 9.8 t for the second graph. I'll go immediately to the window and adjust the window settings. The time settings are already okay. The x settings are a little different. They go from 0 to 4 by 1 and the y values went from negative 20 to positive 20 by 4s. And if I hit graph, you can see the velocity versus time graph. 